Hi, and thank you very much for watching. We are very excited today to welcome Alessandro Ervas from Brazil. Um, he's a coffee farmer who's worked in coffee for many, many years, started to work in coffee when he was a teenager because his father also had a coffee farm. His two brothers also have a coffee farm. And Alessandro has won many, many awards for excellence in coffee. We've worked with him for many, many years. For example, we have the APAS from him, which we started to carry in 2022. And with him will be Thales, who is his colleague and interpreter. So I hope you'll enjoy watching our conversation and thank you very much. Hello. Welcome. Hello. Hello. Uh, I hope you're well. We're very excited to have you here because um, we weren't you know, able to travel because of COVID for a very long time. So this is the first time since a very long time that we have one of our partners in the actual office in Berlin which we are very happy about. Um, and we have, as I mentioned earlier, the APAS is from you. It's a relatively recent addition to our portfolio from Coffee Circle. Um, but before we talk about the APAS, uh, we want to talk a bit about you and your life because you, Alessandro, have been working in coffee for quite a long time. I think your father was a coffee farmer as well, is that right? If you talk a bit about your, how you got into coffee in the first place. Ele está perguntando, falou assim que pelo Covid, é, a questão ficou muito tempo sem poder viajar e tudo, e seu café é um dos que tem mais procura aqui na, né, na, na, nas cafeterias aqui, e que você já é um produtor, um parceiro a, a longo tempo, que seu pai, seu pai é um produtor de café também, tudo, precisa falar um pouco disso aí na questão do, do seu, desde seu pai até chegando, até chegando em você. Bom, falar para ele, eu vou falando em por partes que é mais fácil para traduzir. Eu estou muito feliz de estar aqui. É, a gente teve a oportunidade de receber o, o, o Hannes da Cop Circle lá no Brasil. É, a gente ficou um bom tempo sem poder viajar. É, é, a, essa vinda aqui para mim é uma grande oportunidade de conhecer os nossos parceiros, de entender melhor o, 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 seu, o seu trabalho né, e de fortalecer as relações. Uh, Alessandro is so happy to be here. Uh, I passed a long time. Uh, it, that was so impossible to, to travel because of the COVID. And it uh, was a, a big opportunity to him to be here, uh, know more about the company, everything. And uh, he had the opportunity to receive honeys in, in his farm in Brazil. Uh, so this is so good to to be stronger the relationship between the company and Honey Coffee Farm. Uh, his father born it in, in a farm in São Paulo State. Uh, Alessandro uh, born it in the capital, the city, São Paulo. So, but uh, the dream of his father uh, always uh, buy a farm and another place return to the to the rural area the agriculture cough crop like this so 30 years ago uh, he had this opportunity by a farm a bata farm in São Gonçalo the city and in these years uh, he developed a good job in, in cough crop and now he is harvesting his success uh, in the beginning of this 30 years, uh, he, he had the first contact with cough because in São Paulo it's a little different, um, and uh, be part and they started to be partner of Emater. Emater is a government uh, institution in Brazil that helps uh, small farmers. So uh, Emater incentivated. Alessandro and other farms to found APAS. So uh, because of this, he found they founded APAS, and now they are harvesting uh, the coffee that's so special there. In 1996, uh, 24 farmers found an APAS in San Gonzalo. So uh, the idea is, is only uh, are only sell the coffee with a bigger price but uh, no one knows in that that time that uh, 
their region uh, has a, the big potential that that the, the region show today. So they they started to 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 develop some process there and know more about the coffee and the market and now uh, he he knows that their that region is so special and produce the best coffee of the we we think this in Brazil. <laughs> a partir de 2000, a partir de 2010, é, a gente começou a os produtores começaram a participar de produto de concursos é, e os produtores da da APAS começaram a se destacar. Sempre tínhamos produtores é, finalistas do concurso e isso aí fortaleceu muito a marca APAS. Uh, since 2010. Uh, the farmers started to to send samples for some contest conquest in Brazil, and uh, they started to to they started to to arrive in the finals of the the contest, and this helped a lot the apples to be recognized around the world. And in the same period, uh, the internal market started to pay more because of this credit and this is incentivated a lot the farmers to, to innovate in process, invest in days. Uh, so uh, this is, was so good to the farmers because uh, they started to, to think a little different like oh if I improve my process I can receive more money and put, the, put Brazil in a, in a high area. Uh, potential, great potential. Yeah. Like at the uh, show Brazil that uh, they have a big potential of produce, uh, produce in production of special coffee. Uh, since 2013, Apples uh, received the Fair Trade certification and uh, they started to, to taste their coffees and, and uh, make some analysis like Oh, this coffee it's better to sell like a fair trade, and this coffee is better to sell like a, in a special market. Uh, in the same period, Alessandro uh, was the president of Apas. Uh, he was president by seven years, and that, and after uh, he stayed like a business uh, there, like a commercial department during two years. In two years there, uh, after the this period in Naples, Alessandro returned to to take care uh, only of this product, his production, uh, and start to to learn how to taste his coffee. And uh, with uh, Ademilson and Augusto, uh, they started to to make some analysis, like, oh, if I do this in my process, in a drying process, uh, what this will happen in the taste. So they started to learn how to taste uh, his coffee and make this comparison. Uh, after this, uh, he, he started to plant use the altitude of new varieties in the process. They started to, to plant coffee in a high altitude there. So uh, Alessandro has a, a crop with uh, 1,500 meters of high so it's, it's a I, we don't know if uh, we has we have another area with this altitude in Brazil uh, so uh, Alessandro and uh, his friends start to to make this this uh, this crop in a high level uh, plant uh, different varieties to make this comparison too and start the, to study the process of drying uh, like uh, starting a, a, a large coffee a big quantified coffee in the same in the same thing and after start to like a natural process natural fermentation and uh, this process of the sun believes that it's, it's so good to his quality. Uh, this process uh, is, uh, is only with air, not only like uh, something uh, you have to put, nothing, only with, with the air. 
And uh, Alessandro believes that uh, this, in the end, in a tasting his coffee, uh, show in the in the cupping, like a uh, more body, uh, more body, uh, like fruits, uh, a truck of fruits, like that. Okay. You, you mentioned a lot of what has changed in Brazil over the years and how you have refined your coffee production, coffee harvesting. I was wondering if there's anything that you've learned from your father, who was also a coffee farmer, that you could take with you and you, that you still apply to your coffee production today? Or has it changed so radically that it's an entirely different business now in Brazil? What changed radically since you started to talk to your father? O que, que, você, que, que mudou radicalmente que fez seu, tipo assim, chegar nesse, nesse, nesse ponto para você? Eu acho que meu pai, quando pensou em voltar para a roça, estava pensando em qualidade de vida, né? O principal hum. ponto. E eu acho que nós encontramos qualidade de vida, encontramos é, o nosso, nossa profissão ali. E, e o café, café, a produção de café, o café especial, hoje mudou minha vida. Eu estou aqui por causa do café especial, né? então me, me, vem, me vem conquistando oportunidades através do café especial. Uh, Alessandro disse que quando seu pai pensou em voltar para a agricultura, ele estava pensando que eu quero ter uma vida boa, porque está em São Paulo, uma grande empresa que vive lá, um grande movimento. And returning, living in the farm, so he wants to only to keep calm. So uh, and with this decision, Alessandro and his brothers uh, found uh, their their prof uh, profession. So and because of the coffee, uh, this in the special coffee, all their life changed. And because of the coffee, the special coffee, he is here. Today. Great opportunity. <laughs> Do you uh, you have two brothers, I think, who also work in coffee? Is that right? Fernando, so your mother so Fernando and Maurice. Maurice is present in the office. Only two. Yeah. And do they work on the same farm? Do you work with them directly? How do you split the work? How is that organized? Uh, his, his brothers. Mm -hmm. uh, o Fernandinho da Apple, né? Também os três são produtores da Apple. The the three brothers uh, are produce coffee producers and works in Apple. Are members of Apple mm -hmm. too. So uh, this organization uh, of them. So example, Mauricio uh, has a a farm. Fernando has a farm, Alessandro works with his, his father and his brothers, and he has his uh, only farm too. So, this organization that uh, helped help them a lot to, to achieve the high level of their credit. Uh, when Alessandro was the president of APAS, uh, APAS achieved a, a, a good Uh, great goals uh, achieve a lot of challenge that in the beginning was only ideas. So because of this, this, this success, uh, Alessandro now is, is uh, become uh, a director of another cooperative in the same city. Uh, Apples and Copperbus uh, are partners, but uh, the success of Apples with Alessandro like a, a president. Uh, become possible to Alessandro achieve uh, uh, another cooperative, Copervas, like a director now. And when you founded or co-founded APAS a few years ago, did you have a specific goal in mind? Did you say, this is what I want to achieve with this association? When I was in APAS, you had some goals, like, this is what I want to achieve with this association. I want to achieve this, I want to achieve this, I want to achieve this. Na, na verdade, a gente fundou ela em 2006 e a gente queria vender o café melhor no começo, não tinha muita direção. Em 2009, a gente, eu lembro da gente repensar a APAS e a gente fazer um, um planejamento. Esse planejamento foi feito no papel 
e até que eu, não sei se eu contei para você, quando eu cheguei na cooperativa, eu lembro de eu conversar com o Demilson, que a gente queria achar aquele papel né, para ver uhum. se a gente tinha feito. E praticamente a gente realizou praticamente quase que tudo, 90% estava no papel, é, que tem a marca de café torrado, exportar café, ganhar visibilidade, ganhar nome. Então, assim, gente, esse planejamento que a gente fez em, 90, em 2009, desenhado no papel, a gente realizou quase que 90%, 90% dele. Uh, Alessandro, você é In the beginning, uh, the idea is on, uh, was only sell their coffee with a better price. So, but in 2009, uh, the, he started to, to think, oh, we, we have to, to we have, we have to, to plan more, uh, have some goals to achieve. A gente fez, fez uma reunião com todos os produtores e fizemos esse planejamento assim, desenhando no, no, no quadro e passando por um papel depois. Uh, uh, he called all the farmers from Napas and they started to think together and like writing a paper uh, the goals that they want to, to achieve. Uh, after uh, some years, uh, he, he, look, he looked at this paper again and more than 90% of that goals was achieved. Uh, so this is, uh, was a challenge and they, they start to, to win, uh, to win all the, the battles in the middle of these, these years. Yeah, I think we started to work with you through APAS quite a few years ago. Um, but we, of course, we trade with you directly But do you have, do you trade with co bigger corporations as well, or do you do sort of what we call direct trade only directly with the seller? Without Apples? Well, I understand what I'm saying. Directly or with Apples? Well, both. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. Essa questão do, de vender direto, de vender o café direto, tipo assim, por que, que você pensou nisso aí? Good question. <risos> no começo, a gente tinha é, esse mercado interno, os exportadores internos, que compravam e pagavam café com diferencial. Com o passar dos anos e o aumento da qualidade, esse mercado que a gente tinha interno acabou. Então, houve a necessidade, o produtor que foi incentivado a fazer caridade, buscar a, essa agregação de valor, esse diferencial, através da venda direta, porque lá a gente não tinha mais. Uh... Like, like I said, in the beginning, the internal market pay, uh, was paying more because of the, the quality. So, uh, with some years, uh, this, this bonus, it's over. So, they stopped to, to pay this, uh, this bonus in the, because of the quality. So, uh, the farmers that was, uh, was selling his co their, their crops, Uh, with a big price in the market, uh, they have to to search new markets, and the direct trade was a an, an option uh, to to continue selling coffee with a, a big price. Now uh, the internal market started to to increase uh, to increase again, and the farmers that uh, was uh, was in, in, investing. In the production of high quality of of, of their coffs, uh, they started to to sell their coffs or to internal market or to outside of Brazil. Uh, so, and with this, uh, make the the, the farmers uh, open the, the door to 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 continue selling his their coffees with a big price, a good price. Uh, the partner, the partnership with Cofsego uh, guarantee that uh, to, the, to the farmers to, to invest more in process and uh, to improve their quality because uh, they know that in the end of the harvest, the Cofsego uh, will are waiting, waiting from his cop. So this is this is good because uh, help helping a lot. Like oh, I can invest here. I can uh, put more money in, in my business uh, because in the end of the process, 
I have a, a, a big partner waiting for my production. Yeah, I read an interview with you which you gave a few years ago where you talk about direct trade relationship and that it, it protects you as the farmer a bit better against the uncertainties of the market, the volatility of uh, extreme weather conditions, for example, because you have that direct relationship. Um, I was wondering, there was a big um, frost in Brazil in 2021, which was last year. I was wondering how you were affected by that and uh, extreme weather phenomena and climate change in general. I think it was affected by the... Because I was in an interview with the people who were saying that it was direct o direct trade, tipo, tipo, te dava proteção contra a volatilidade do mercado, a questão de clima e tudo, e a questão do, da desgiada no passado, o que que te afetou, o que que aconteceu na sua propriedade. Yesterday was the crazy year in Brazil. É, a nossa região não foi muito afetada pela geada, mas assim, tivemos vários fatores climáticos no mesmo ano uhum. que afetou, aí depois eu completo. In our region, in the last year, uh, the frost uh, well, wasn't so strong. In, uh, wasn't so strong in our region. In other regions, uh, in Brazil, uh, uh, have happened a lot of problems. But in our region, not only happened the frost. The frost uh, isn't strong there, but happened a big period without rain. That was a Another problem that, together with the frost, uh, become a, a big problem in the near future. Uh, Alessandro said that in the last year uh, happened four problems in his farm. The first uh, was uh, the frost after a period, a big period with, without rain. After uh, when the the coffee trees start to open, uh, the flowers uh, rain a lot. Is, isn't so isn't good to the trees. That's so, uh, happened the ice rain yeah. there, and uh, and uh, and his farm was affected. How did you respond to that? How 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 did you? I, I presume you can't counteract that because it's not in your power. It's it's the weather. Um, but how did you deal with it? How much of your crop did you lose? Tipo assim, ele sabe tipo assim que não, você não tem o poder de controlar isso aí. Mas como é que você lida com com isso que você perdeu assim? Então assim não tem muito o que fazer. Tem que hoje tem que esperar o próximo ano. Né? Mas é, tem alguns tem tem alguns seguros no Brasil, mas é, ainda, ainda é muito novo o seguro quanto a gente hum. quanto a seca não tem. Tem quantas já está chuva de pedra, mas isso ainda acontece, não acontece sempre, né? Uh, today we have only to wait for for the next next harvest. In Brazil uh, now it's becoming common the to, uh, the farmers face some some security safe like about frost and the ice rain. Is, is a kind of insurance? Yeah, yes, yeah, insurance. Yes, is this? Uh, so this is so. Uh, it's becoming common pay pay this insurance in Brazil, but uh, these problems that the insurance like uh, give a protection to the farmer uh, don't happen every year. So uh, the farmers start to to think, oh, I will pay for this uh, a big price, and I don't know if it will happen or not. And in the end of the year, I will. Uh, spend my money and with nothing like that. But are there really uh, insurance companies in Brazil that offer you to, you know, if you lose a lot of your crop, then they will make up for that by paying you, like a normal standard insurance company? Yeah, this is this weather insurance company only protect by frost and ice rain, only these. But they are they're private, pay for you in private insurance companies. Yes, private. This is very interesting. I had no idea. It's just a relatively new phenomenon that there are you know, insurance companies who do that. Or is, has this been going on for decades? Uh, if it's something new or if it's been in the last few decades. 
Na verdade, é, já tinha, mas o produtor usava muito pouco, porque ficou muito, muitos anos sem, sem, sem giar, né? Então, você falou que é caro, né? Uhum. Então, agora que a gente vê assim que tem algumas empresas começando a desenvolver alguns modelos para garantir a produção em caso de, de, de falta de chuva, assim, de, uhum. mas ainda não está bem. Não está bem formatado, está no início, está tá começando a aparecer um novo modelo aí que talvez seja mais eficaz do que só geada e, e chuva de pedra. É, Alessandro, você sabe da Desinsurance? Uh, oh, they are a little old, but uh, in Brazil we passed a big time without frost. So the farmers, oh, uh, don't, don't care with insurance. Uh, but now, uh, because of the last year, a lot of companies are starting to, to develop new models, like guarantee the production uh, if some problem happens. Uh, have you tried uh, our, I mean, your APAS, really, I would say our APAS? Have you, have you tried it since you arrived in Berlin? Você provou o seu café lá em. Esse café está sendo servido aqui. A gente provou lá na World of Coffee, né? We tasted the. Uh, this coffee in the world of coffee in Milano. Oh, oh yes, you came from Milano, which is yes. happening now, yes. Yeah. The great coffee for me. <laughs> <It's gone. laughs> we, we love it as well. Was it as you expected? What did you think how it would taste like? What was your reaction when you tasted it in Milan? It's a, a, a clean coffee with a, a profile with fruits that uh, is so, so good to, to drink. And uh, he, he can drink like more than one liter in the day of his, this coffee. That is so good. Well, we're very, very happy to hear it. We're very happy to have it, and our, our customers like it too. So that's good. São, são dois produtores, né? Com muita história para contar e com muito trabalho junto. Muito trabalho junto. Acho que deu isso ajudou a, a dar a liga do. Uh, this blend uh, are from two. Partners, to farmers, to to producer that uh, talk a lot about process and other things, and this help a lot to this band uh, be so so amazing like that. It is yes, and I also read that you learned a lot. We talked about cupping and tasting that you learned it about ten years ago, 2014. Things when you started cutting your own coffees and you slightly modified your processing uh, in response to that, isn't that right? In this year, he, he tried a lot of process and sometimes to appear a coffee with oh, a high score and uh, he tried to to copy this process and and try to to put this process in a big quantify of coffee. Uh, a farmer that produces special coffee. Isn't oh, this is is good for me. No, every time every harvest is uh, they are thinking more in how they can uh, reinvent their process and achieve a score a score a score uh, better of the last year. So uh, Alessandro, uh, as I said, it's so difficult to all. Their, uh, his coffee achieved like oh nine nine points, example. Uh, but his idea is to to achieve uh, great scores in a in a, uh, a average process. So he tried to to copy the process that the, that was good in their coffee yeah? and and try to to put the same process in the other coffees. He learned how to taste the coffee. He, he plant coffee in a high altitude, uh, reinvent the process, and this uh, can be possible to to achieve high scores. Uh, working with Hannes, uh, the idea is to to develop a greenhouse with a climate control uh, that uh, can be possible to to copy the the natural process, uh, like with a high humidity and a, uh, a small temperature inside of this greenhouse and uh, to copy this process for another load too. Yes, very good. And plant more varieties like Arara is 
uh, growing year by year in Brazil, uh, showing uh, big screens and a high score. Well, this one has a very high score and again, we're very happy with it. So um, thank you very much and thank you very much for your time, Thales and Alessandro. Thank you. Thank you so much. Eu que agradeço a oportunidade de estar aqui e espero receber vocês no Brasil novamente. Uh, I said I'm so happy to be here now and uh, I hope that I can receive you now uh, in Brazil to know more about this process. I can't wait to come to Brazil. <laughs> Let's do this. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you. Thank you.